we're creatures of seasons. Yeah. And we have different cycles. We have a 24 hour hormone cycle. We have a seven day detox cycle. We have a 28 day menstrual cycle. Yeah. We have a seven year complete body shift cycle. There's a lot of cool ways of looking at health and understanding how our body's yeah. relationship toward the land and our cosmology all fit this perfect magic. We're, it's all magic. Hi, my name is Aggie and this is Biohacking Bestie. The one stop shop for a modern queen where you can find biohacking courses, self-growth courses, and where you can find the most incredible community of women so you can hit all of your biohacking goals and beyond. Welcome, welcome to Biohacking Bestie. And today uh, we are hosting one of my brothers, like soul family, Shervin. Uh, oh, you did that good. <laughs> yeah, did I? Yeah, yeah. And so it might seem weird why am I sharing my friend's name, but it's we actually had a conversation about it, like my Polish background. And as you come from a different background, different culture and different language, you might not be picking up on certain sounds. And you have a Persian name? Yeah, ancient Persian name. Beautiful. Yeah. What does it mean? So Cher no. is lion and <sighs> Veen is king of. So it's an ancient, ancient Persian name before the Ottoman Empire. We're talking about Zoroaster times. It's so funny because my name is Agnieszka, which is lamb. Apparently it's coming from lamb. So it's lamb and lion. Lamb and lion. <laughs> I, I love your name, by the way. Agnieszka. Yeah. That's a beautiful name. You're one of the yeah. very few people that actually ask me for my real name, which I appreciate. Of and course. Thank you for seeing me. Right. I don't think we are our names, but it's also a powerful stamp or signature to have too. So it's like there's a duality there. And I sometimes go back and forth with it. Right. Because so. I think there's like a level of like when someone someone says my real name I it brings me back to my inner child because mm -hmm. it's what I heard being called when I was little and it's like oh wow I like I'm no longer that person but am I really right yeah like, absolutely she's still there so she just came out when you called her like, <laughs> that's beautiful so cute. Yeah, yeah thank you it's really good to be here by the way just to mm -hmm. break the ice we met at our brother Andres and I guess you'd been part of Symbiotica and knew what it is but you you didn't associate it with me no and then we I just was just like oh he's cool and I was like wait he's from Symbiotica like what the hell like yeah I yeah so it's cool I think that was like two months ago yeah and you've been weaving I've been weaving and here we are I'm so grateful and I feel like I don't even know where to start with you because you're so knowledgeable and one of the most interesting people I have ever met in my life I'm like where do I even start? I feel like there's a part of me that wants to talk to you about supplements in general, just as you being a founder with one of the fastest growing companies in the world. Congratulations. Thank you. Which must be massive. And someone, I launched my supplements just recently and I know how hard it is to, to build something of value. And I think it's super funny because you get into biohacking and you feel like, okay, I'm going against the big pharma. It's such a corrupted industry. You know, they want you to get sick and you get into supplements and then you realize it's actually pretty corrupted too. Cause the things they put into supplements are equally as bad, if not worse. And then it's like, Ooh, spooky. And even before meeting you, I saw your brand and I was like, holy sh actually doing the work they're putting the work into finding the ingredients researching what's possible and you're paving the way so congratulations and thank you i really appreciate that i feel like now that people are waking up it's gonna be one of the biggest supplement company in the world and i i see it right because it's, you're just educating people and you're really you, yeah it's symbiotic as a movement you yeah, know, it really is. Yeah. We're not even a brand anymore. We're like literally a total movement, you know, and I'm just one, I would say minor microcosm within the ecosystem of Symbiotica. I have an amazing, amazing family within it. So many awesome, powerful, intention-led people that are running the ship at Symbiotica, you know, and taking the unique signature that I provided and founding it and designing the formulas. Everything else is embedded within this beautiful ecosystem of people. Um, but what was the reason why you started your own supplement company? Well, I've been around uh, health and wellness and this business since I was a little kid. Yeah, I was mentored by David Wolf, who's my cousin. He mentored me at age nine to 15. And that was when he became the most famous raw foodist in the world. And he, he brought all the superfoods to North America. That was him all the cacao, all the moringa, whatever it is that you saw in the you know late 90s, early 2000s, that's because of David Wolf. Wow. And um, so I was a fly on the wall on his adventures and I was you know, learning all of these different things about 
you know, what food really is and what sourcing is and what organic even means and what biodynamics is and intention based agriculture versus monocropped ag agriculture and all those things. And so it just gave me a really strong imprint from day one. And plus, I'm an investigator, anarchist, martyr. That's my design. I always want to, you know, lift something up and see what's what's under it. And so I spent my whole, you know. Oh, what a beautiful metaphor. The visual is so good. <laughs> I was like, oh, you're so good with words. I love it. You felt that, right? Yeah, I did. I it's, did. It's poetry. It's an art. And I'm actually now really going deep with Richard Rudd. And we're actually doing a um, He's a so amazing with together. words. I read He's, all the Gene Keys just because I was like, I just want to listen to like the way he dances with each word is the so quintessence yeah. <laughs> he's Beautiful. that he's he's an he's an artist before anything he's a he's a scientist and an artist in one and we're going through some really deep work me and him right now and i'm really excited i can't wait for it we're going to be in abisa doing some amazing things I'll, I'll i'll share with you offline as much as i'm the artist and all these i'm also a, a fucking lion and i get frustrated and i get angry And the system drives me crazy. And, you know. So what's wrong with the supplement business? <laughs> Go for well, it. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not a, you, you know, the term like greenwashing, mm -hmm. you know, brands that make things trendy and because they've polished it on the outside, it makes everyone feel good, but it's actually doing more harm than good. Yeah. They put a celebrity behind it and what, yeah, yeah they use choice words and nothing irks me more than that. There's just something like visceral in my like colon that I feel when I'm around that energy. And it's interesting because I have a Rudolf Steiner uh, um, background. You know, I grew mm. up with Waldorf and with understanding Steiner's cosmology and Steiner was around, he was developing his, I would say his anthroposophy around the time that mysticism was hitting everywhere in the world. And it became a, almost a material thing. Like spirituality became like seances and burning things. And it became this whole show. Which and is it, a little bit like that these days, to be honest. It's extremely like that. And that's, <laughs> that's a Luciferic energy. And we can get into that. Yes, I love, yes. Yeah, we Let's can get, get into it. that cosmology. But it's similar in the sense of greenwashing. It's like you're just putting things on it for ego, for materialism, but you don't give a fuck. You could care less what damage mm -hmm. this is causing. And that, that right there, I mean, since I was a kid, those types of behaviors being phony and I'm a Tupac guy too. Like I grew up with like thug life, you know, like <laughs> I'm here, like the, the poetry of life is real. I'm going to, I'm going to wear my heart on my sleeve and fight for it. And that's, that's my, you know, that's my Dharma. And so we all know pharmaceutical industry is a symptomology approach mm, and, yeah. you know, we have to metabolize a drug at some point and that comes with a, a whole host of problems. I mean, you cannot treat a disease by cutting off the messenger. And that's not rocket science, we know that. And so the, pharma the pharmaceutical industry mm -hmm. has its faults in so many levels, but I also know that it serves its purpose for some people too. So I'm, I'm at that level of sophistication where I just don't denounce everything, but we have to wake up from the symptomology approach because that's leading us towards further devastation. Not to mention, you know, the pharmaceutical industry also has a fiduciary obligation to turn a profit, yeah. which is a complete, you know, distortion in the field. It's reckless and it's an oxymoron when it comes to health. So 100% because it's like, let's talk about like, just what does it usually look like for a supplement or a drug company, right? They create a product and they want to scale and grow because it's super competitive. And so they, need some funding, right? And so they go out, look for investors. And then whenever they need to create a product, they would check with their investors if that's a good idea. And what do investors care about? Profit. Bottom line, marginalization, expansion, growth, capitalization, destroying other competitors and keeping people addicted. Yeah. That's what it is. It's all one part of that same soup. And you're absolutely right. And I always knew when I when I started understanding the systems and how Wall Street works and shareholders and the actual term fiduciary, which means that it's now a legal obligation. That means that you have to turn a profit every quarter or else you're going to lose your job and the next person is going to come up and do it, right? That's a problem when it comes to 
treating people's health. And that's why America is on the bottom loads of health across the board when it comes to pathologies and autoimmune diseases. I mean, it's insane right now what we're dealing with arthrosclerotic disease, cardiovascular cancers, metabolic diseases, which spirals out into obesity and diabetes and go on and on. And then the whole, we don't even, we're not even talking about infections and co-infections and viral loads and STDs and all the things that are happening out there. It's insane. Then you throw the fear on top of it. That's a whole nother subject. So we know the pharmaceutical industry has got some problems, right? And to be just to interrupt, but I feel like the fear and the cortisol of like living in fear overrides everything. I feel like if people felt empowered like clients and were fearless and entrusted their gut intuition, there's no, I believe that our body's innate ability to cleanse itself and detox would be able to deal with a lot of this crap. But if 100%. you add fear on top of it and the cortisol and this survival instead of fight or flight nonstop, like that is the root of all disease, right? Our body's not being able to do what it does best, which is keeping us alive, right? And right. you kill the life force in us, right? The fear kills the life force because you start to wonder if I can't trust the very people that are meant to look out for me, I don't want, I don't know if I should be around, right? Like back in the day, we would trust our elders. Now, you know, you can't. So you lose that, the willingness to live and fight. And yeah, like it robs your life force. And then at the end of the day, it just doesn't matter what you eat. If you're missing that, that, that spark in you, that magic that we all have and are born with. That's exactly right. I mean, you said it perfectly. And it's challenging to feel into that embodiment and the gnosis that a majority of the population have had their sovereignty robbed from them from childhood, even while they were probably in the womb. You know, there's so much suffering in that sense. Our I mean, systems. The are, business yeah. of being born, it's one of the best movies by Ricky Lake, who was a guest on my podcast. And it's it's honestly been super helpful to to see that it, it is a business, right? And it's it the, from the very moment that you come onto this planet, it's from a very disempowered place. That's right. Yeah. Of you taking too long. Ricky was at my house last week. Oh, and really? I had Lindsay Mijas there, who's done more births as a doula and midwife than anyone we know. She's berserk. You should definitely talk to her. And yeah, these are, I mean, we're having the same discussion. So I'm glad that these things are getting out there and people are starting to snap out of, you know, the false identity and the victim, you know, because at the end of the day, it's really, it's a poverty conscious, it's a scarcity or lack that's been embedded into them. And then at some point the body just can't grasp it anymore and everyone's just escaping. You know, and it's like, how do, how do I escape? Well, staring at your phone or eating this food or getting involved with the drama trap and, you know, hating on people and the envy, jealousy, jealousy, all these things just start spiraling. And before you know it, you're 50 years old and you're getting diagnosed with something and you're chasing your health and it's just it's a disaster yeah and you know. to be fair if you're 50 years old and just getting diagnosed with something you probably get an anomaly <laughs> it's usually yeah, like in the, people in the 20s that. yeah, yeah. it's kind of crazy how many young people are getting diagnosed these days and it's funny because I, I started as a life coach and very quickly I realized that the connection was like oh you know just live your best life and you know snap out of the victim mentality and I realized it's like if people don't have their biology figure it out you there's can't. no amount of motivation tony robbins you can put into somebody you will feel like shit there's nothing you can do and so all of this coaching and all of this like you know habit stacking and yeah. whatever it is that you know like yeah. all these coaches putting out there i'm like well how about we just figure out your you know like there's n no amount of willpower you can produce out of thin air and the moment I figure out my diet, I realize I'm smarter, I'm more motivated, I don't need willpower, I just think for myself. And so I think what you're doing with Symbiotica is like the most amazing revolution because it's not even about telling people how. Mm -hmm. They know how. Everyone has their own talent. It's just giving them the fuel so they can run the show. Again, you're, you're hitting grand slams here because I, I think I did a post, I've said it multiple times, but I said you can forget about reaching all these different levels of sophisticated growth and inspiration if your colon is rotting you have dysbiosis you're riddled with parasites you know you have leaky gut you know your body can't even manufacture most of the neurotransmitters you need just to have a stable conversation 
you know, and go on and on. You're magnesium deficient, you know, cortisol spikes, you're living in fight flight high 24 seven. Yeah, Just, tunnel vision. You like you totally. can't even like have a perspective. And it's funny because they say fight or flight, you get the straw vision versus the the eagle, you know, panoramic vision. Right. And so literally to have a like an eagle eye view on your life and the society or anything, you need to step out of fight or flight and yeah. right. And you need to get that, you know, perspective, which you cannot have, like physically cannot have yeah. in fight or flight. You can't which they know. You can't. And you can only force it so long before something breaks. You and know. it's 2017, and then you're realizing that you know you have you're on this amazing spiritual journey, and you're like, how do I wake the f up, <laughs> <laughs> the community? And you're like, I can just preach, which would be annoying, and people would dismiss me, or I can just empower them in their bodies and let them do what they need to do and their talents. That's it. I mean, <laughs> I'm guessing, but yeah, I mean that's, that's what it looks like to me. 2017 was a crazy year, you know. So what happened 2017? Well, I mean, I was on the heels of three, four years of of a lot of medicine work, you know, in the jungles. Was it ayahuasca? A lot of ayahuasca, a lot of peyote, a lot of mas masculine in multiple forms, and then ultimately, you know, five methoxy dimethyl tryptamine, five meo DMT. Uh, which is tattooed on my side, and ah. um, you know I've served that medicine to. What was many. your best download from? <laughs> Bufa, well, otherwise known as Bufa. I mean, I died. I had a cathartic samadhi, you know, complete meltdown of self, and my entire reality shifted back to when I was about twelve. So I wow. became twelve almost instantaneously, and I was running a very successful private equity group. And I loved what I do, but I, but I always knew my life is in health and wellness and redesigning the system and being like almost a Robin Hood, so to speak, in the system. You know, that was yeah, my vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone around me knew that. And, um, but I was very successful at what I was doing and created a lot of growth. And um, as soon as, you know, I re-entered my body after 30 minutes of being in some kind of bardo state, everything shifted. Wow, beautiful. And it was, yeah, it was. I had this no. moment, my first bufo, that I realized that I experienced, you know, like no ego and no fear, right? Because mm -hmm. there was this moment when the lady that was facilitating the shaman, she basically said, there will be a moment where you just know you can trust and stop holding on and you just have to surrender. Yeah. And I'm like, what is she talking about? And then you get there and you're like, oh, fuck, it's so scary. It's so scary. I'm melting. And then you like, kind of like tell yourself it's okay to trust. And my download was like, wow, on the other side of fear, like the very thing that I'm so scared of, right, which is they, they scare you with death. And it's the most beautiful thing you experience. So if that's what I'm the most scared of, I'm no longer scared. Yeah. And so... The switch. Yeah, the switch yeah. of like what's coming up after and it's all an illusion it's Our an illusion but what you realize yeah. it's like in the moment of bliss you have no feelings mm -hmm. and so we're on this planet earth to feel the pain to feel disappointment to feel all of these things so welcome these feelings stop numbing them stop this is talking to me not you <laughs> so I'm preaching to my notes to self like don't be afraid of like feeling the grief feeling the disappointment because once you're on the other side you're not feeling any of this so there's the sweetness yeah. of, of all the not so nice feelings as well. So just go feel them because all the other side of fear is just bliss, right? Complete bliss and complete release, a tidal wave of emotions and energy that's been suppressed. We do a good job of suppressing things in these bodies. Mm -hmm. The body was almost designed to suppress all, every emotion. And at some oh, point, that would be my Chris question for you because yeah. I, I have a theory that the the very reason why we're sick is is from our repressed feelings because I 100%. feel like you can drink poison and it'll be fine if you're healthy, strong, live from that empowered place, and yeah, your body will be able to to detoxify itself. I will say this: I, I think that you can find balance in both, right? So yeah, it's not to go around right. like, or is arsenic? Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But what you're saying lends truth is our, you know, the biology of belief is our epigenetics, right? It's like what you believe really starts to become your reality. 
And that's the things that you're thinking about all day long, the people you're around, the water you're drinking, the foods you're eating, those would dictate what genes turn on, what genes turn off. If you decide to stay in the health span for 70, 80, 90 years, or go to the disease span when you're 33, you know what I mean? So that's a real powerful perspective to have. And my whole thing is why not have it all? We can be Taoist immortals and you know, evaporate into the ether of God, but we can also be trained chemists and biologists and understand how these systems work. And let's, let's meet together. And some people call it biohacking. And I think we talked about this when we first met. I said, well, I'm not hacking anything. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm in the embodiment. We need, we need a, a better word for we that. Because totally, I feel like, yeah. and I also feel like people are like, wait, so are you into biohacking or spirituality? And I'm like, for me, it's all the same. It's about like- You're up leveling. Yeah, yeah, stepping into my power. Yeah. And I'm also a soul in a human body. And so this I need this vehicle to get places and yeah. help me do shit. So like this is quite important. Right? Yeah. It's we're, we're in really amazing times right now. That's a trip. I'm I excited. About it. Yeah, I'm really excited. I also know that, you know. Be- what did you say? The best day ever? We're having the best day ever. Yeah. F- yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a Today's gonna be a biology of belief. Yeah. You know, if because if today's the best day ever, then it's going to be the best day ever. You know, this is how you you say that to, to with your partner. Is that true? Like with your uh, business partner? Is I say that, it to everybody. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we always we always do. I mean, me and and Dave Wolf because oh, okay. he kind of took that and made it his thing. We're having the best day ever. Today's the best day ever. Which is so beautiful because I feel like, oh, today's Monday. I'm just shooting a podcast. It's, you know, I'm not going to Greece like I am in two weeks. That's going to be the best day ever. Today, I just need to get by, right? That's, that's an illusion. And exactly, that's how we lose right? the present. Yeah. Yes. And that's exactly. how we lose time. That what you just did right there and the way you coined it. Yeah, but I'm gonna, you, no, I still catch myself. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Because I feel like I'm only now learning that like the sweetness of the everyday moment and the biggest spiritual teachers of my life were five puppies in bali last month because they're so present and so this this illusion was like where do i think the bliss is the bliss is here right now and me trying to feel like oh i just need to call and i need to do something and then realize like no like this this very moment of play of innocence of love of oxytocin has been so healing for me. I feel like completely transformed and it didn't come from ayahuasca, surprisingly, or meditation. I didn't even meditate that month. I was just like, every second of my day was a meditation because I was all of a sudden so present. So I was not so, you know what I mean? Like it was every day was best day ever. Every day is the best, every moment, every breath. I mean, that's living with the ultimate level of intention, you know? And I I was thinking about that earlier today because you know, being part of this symbiotica journey has not been easy. You know, this is 15, 17 hour days for the last four or five years and so much on my plate and so much energy around it. And there's moments where I was just like, uh, like I can't wait till the next phase or whatever that was, you know, and that's a little bit a form of a coping or escapism. Mm-hmm. But then I was thinking, I was, I've been thinking about it a lot and deep in my meditation practice is um, I'm never going to be in this opportunity again. This yeah. is it. it, you know, at least in this form, in this body, the way it is, the mind, the, the, everything. And I would say what a disservice to not embrace every part of it and really, really, you know, hold it dear to my heart and not feel like I, there's a little bit of victim in it. And that was really, you know, that, that really put me in position to just crush. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. Because we all do that. Like, oh, I course. can't wait to get married. I can't wait to have babies. And then for the babies to be two and then to, for them to be four. And I wish they were younger now or whatever it might have been, right? We all tend to feel like it's going to be so much better. Life is like this. What, what's the Rumi quote? We're a drop You're of not- water in the ocean of time. Like I'm paraphrasing my, my great, great, great grandpa, <laughs> but that is true. If you look at the time equivalents, we're just a micro shot of it. Whether mm-hmm. we incarnate and, and reincarnate and do all that, that's a whole different discussion, but it's just quick. I remember just being 10 the other day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like, so we got to like, have that in our ethos and that's you know that's part of my meditation too is the ultimate level of presence like this conversation i'm not thinking about 
you know, the seven other things that I have lined up for today and all that stuff and this and that. I'm here. This is all I know right now. This is, and it's this, beautiful because yeah. you actually set such a beautiful standard for yourself because now I notice when I meditate next to somebody who it allows me to go deeper together. Mm-hmm. If, yeah. if that person goes deep, it's just beautiful because it's kind of like a an anchor going down in the ocean and you can just hold on to it. Let's go together. And it's like, oh, we can jump together. Yeah. And so even your being present allows me to be even more present, right? Because it's, like, it's it can just like set the standard, like the, the grounding. For sure. No, you're like, I, I'm feeling it with you, yeah. I, I mean, your, your field, so you have a really, you have a warm, magnetized energy. I felt it the moment I got here. You know, uh, getting into this place was kind of a disaster. Yes. <laughs> and I was a little bit, and I don't mean just like into the, where you're at, just LA and the whole thing. And I was juggling calls. And by the time I found the spot, I was kind of like, there was a moment in here. I was just like, what the f- am I doing? You know, mm-hmm. I just left like, you know, you're paradise. Beautiful. Yeah. And then I immediately just snapped out of that and then kind of just went into like a deep thought and was just thinking about, you know, my, my health. And I was thinking about what all these things that I have gratitude for and my loved ones and just what a ride. And then as soon as I saw you and looked into your eyes and heard your voice immediately, it all, you know, dissipated any of that energy. I mind you, there were two dogs barking. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. Yeah. I had to get through that too. (laughs) Yeah. So beautiful. Okay. So uh, again, so you 2017, you realized it's like, cool, I'm going to like create a symbiotic cup, but like, let's be honest. Like if you're not into supplements, you probably have no idea, but the hardest bit is sourcing this, the ingredients, right? Because this is, this is where you get stuck as a, as a supplement owner. And you always have to do your research, making sure that the ingredients are good quality. Yeah. And this is somewhat easy if you use like, I don't want to say mainstream ingredients, but the ones that are quite popular. I'll give you, I'll give you the whole scope. You you want to hear how this whole thing works, supplement industry and all that stuff. I hope people don't get angry, but we're here to shake it up. Let them get angry. It's their medicine. (laughs) (laughs) I saw so many holes in the industry. I know who's doing what I've always known who's behind what, where they're getting things from, how they're putting it together. And, And don't get me wrong. There is a lot of brands out there that I respect like real true brands that are doing things the right way that are in it for the long run. And they're almost like mom and pop style, you know, and a lot of the big brands that we know of today, they started that way. And when you have scale of economies and economic situations, things change. Some of them have kept their values. So this is not pointing fingers, but this is just shedding some light on how the supplement industry works. What I saw was a complete race to the bottom. So that was at the height of the entire CBD movement, right? Mm. And most people have no idea what what cannabidiol is or the entourage effect or terpenes, endocannabinoid system, cell retrograde system. These these are things apart that I've known pretty much my whole life. I've been studied with it. I've been around master growers. I understand the cannabis plant very well. I the hemp rudialis plant, so the high CBD strains. We have farms in Southern Oregon. I've been around this, the cultivar of it, the, the traditionary cannabis realm. And when I saw every single money guy I know getting into the CBD industry, it made me so sick to my stomach. And they were all spouting the same verbatim bullshit, inflammation, CB1, you know, inf- you know, this receptor site, it was all the same slogans back and forth, regurgitated, changed up, regurgitated, and not delivering a product or even knowing what the hell it was. And that energy right there is what catapulted me to actually create Symbiotica. I didn't want to create a CBD brand, but it was just, it was at the perfect storm for me. You know, I was uh, drifting away from private equity and I was dealing with, you know, my father was starting to get ill. It was a really interesting time. And my, my soul was ripped wide open. I, I was just channeling like full on, you know, I was living different than I was living today. That's for sure. I was not on, you know, social media or, you know, I was in, I was so in alignment on so many things that it's a little bit difficult for me to do right now. I was praying, you know, eight hours a day wow. in my, in my training 
so connected to my spirit. I think we, you still are, right? And this this illusion. I, I maybe we can just challenge that a little bit and just say that it's the, the seasons in life, right? And it's Boom. the season that you know they're going inwards, yeah. and now you're just time to 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 reap. I'm sorry, I'm very bad. At no, you're <laughs> you're you're actually you're very clairvoyant. I can tell by your energy. You see things, and you get exactly it on an artistic. And you might not be able to bring that to yeah. words. But you know um, what I'm trying to say, of right? Of course, yeah. yeah. No, the, but it's that, like even feels like because I catch myself doing the same whenever I'm not meditating and don't have this beautiful practice. I'm like, oh, like right now I'm too much outer focus. But in reality, it's like I was doing all that work so I can give absolutely. it out. Absolutely, we're creatures of seasons, yeah. and we have different cycles. We have a 24-hour hormone cycle. We have a seven-day detox cycle. We have a 28-day menstrual cycle. Yeah. We have a seven-year complete body shift cycle with the human life and the forms. What's the seven day detox cycle? I'm very curious. Well, it's just how our body, you know, goes through a complete cleansing process. Ah, I didn't know, you know that. Through blood and bile and lymph and all those things. Yeah. It's very fascinating. Uh, yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. We can go down into the TCM realm and the Ayurvedic realm and there's other Druid ways of looking at too, you know, he's, he's of Druid land from England. There's a lot of cool ways of looking at health and understanding how our body's wow. relationship toward the land and our cosmology all fit this perfect magic. We're, it's all magic at the end of the day. We are magic. Yeah. I'm on day eight, not one gram of sugar or carbohydrate. Oh, yeah. So full I'm in full ketosis. ketosis right now. So I might be stuttering a little bit, but I'm in ketosis, which is full on right now. So I'm not using glucose at all. I'm actually just obliterating yeah, full fat, fat right now for energy. Right? Yeah, full fat adaptation. And it feels really good. So I guess my, my point was, is that I was in a deep mystical realm yeah. during the process of creating Somatica. And I felt it internally that I just wanted to do it different. And I wanted to be so transparent and I wanted it to be wide out, wide in the open. I wanted a founder of a company and its chief scientific officer to be so available. You know, you don't see that with other companies. You have no idea who's behind the scenes. You can't communicate with them. You don't know. Well, where I know it's companies coming. that hide their CEOs or like hide their founders because they just clearly don't look like they use the product, right? Absolutely, because they're just there for the money, and so they wouldn't sell the product, so they hide the you know the founders. Wouldn't you trust someone's health that is in the embodiment and trust what they're talking that's about? That's why they're hiding because yeah. they know that. So Somatica was birthed on that level. And I really just wanted it to be a small artisan brand. I had no <laughs> Oops, ask. That yeah. didn't work out for you. <laughs> it didn't work out, but, we, but we've kept it artisan. It's amazing. And the supplement industry, someone goes to a manufacturer. There's 10,000 manufacturers out there and says, mm. I want you to recreate this. Just slap my label on it. Let's get it out on Amazon yeah. and tell a funny story. I mean, that's really the supplement industry in a yeah. nutshell. And it, it's actually way crazier than that. Understanding, I mean, that's like you know, even assuming that it's good, right? Like I, yeah. most of the times it's just they don't really, let's put the fillers and the binders and preservatives because it's going to last on shelves longer. So we can just keep it on, you know, for, if we can order big chunks from China, and let it sit on the shelf for two years. So if we put enough binders and fillers, then we don't have to worry about the quality. Totally. And that is, that's an elementary perspective too. You know, and I don't mean that as an insult. You, that's, the real, that's looking at it, but it goes way deeper than that. Like we don't even know the vital force and bioavailability of a lot of these materials. I don't care if it's organic or not. Yeah. How it was extracted, where it was grown, who had their hands involved, you know, what level of testing are we talking about? This is beyond GMP facility and, and things oh, of that nature. it's the energy, nature. right? At the end of the day, it's like, what's the energy behind the very product? Totally. What is the energy? What is the intention? Where's the ideation too? So our formulas have been completely ideated for them to proliferate together and to potentiate each other. If we're making food-based products that the body can understand it and and there's no speed bump or histamine reaction. Mm -hmm. Most of the supplements out there, where I don't care where you go, Whole Foods, Aeroin, whatever, you have no idea. You put it in your body, your body is like, wait, what is this? There's, there has to be a signature. So the mm -hmm. body, it's, it's we call it radionics. And that so the body recognizes it. And so- It can I, use it, right? It so, it can, yeah. so it's utilized. We know you are what you eat, but more importantly, you are what you can absorb. Oh, 
beautiful right and, and so, it's, let's just like from the very beginning what you said is like yes like you can have all these beautiful products they're organic but if the soil is depleted like the plant is only as as nutrient as the soil that's so. that's totally correct organic just means it doesn't have herbicide fungicide larvicide insecticide glyphosate whatever their uh, whatever other agents that's assuming that it's far enough from the farm that isn't organic <laughs> if it's next door then you probably what you just said and most of them you know the wind's yeah. blowing yeah right and so so again, I'm not knocking anyone out there. I'm just saying there's levels to this. So it's important for people to understand. Right? It, it's it like, really this is. is. The, the dark side of the supplement industry that's there. And why are we taking supplements? Like we should be getting all of our food and nutrition and biotics exactly. and prebiotics and postbiotics from the food that we're eating. But the problem is we're not living in the same ecosystem as we did before. Commercial agriculture, industrialization has changed our landscape. And yeah. so everyone asks, well, why, why do I need supplements? And I say, well, you don't, you, you don't need anything. You got to do what works for you. But we are not on the same level of diversity of foods and the sophistication of foods as we were 150 years ago. In certain ways we are, but in certain ways we ha we ha we've lost our way. And with the industrialization, you know, the foods that we're eating are vo void of all those things. And so I studied orthomolecular medicine, which is wow. the concept of a lack of nutrients leads towards pathologies. So if you don't have riboflavin or niacin, B3, or thiamine, B1. Which most, be most people are B, uh, B deficient, deficient, magnesium deficient, silica deficient, enzyme deficient. I mean, I can go on and on, you know, hydrochloric acid deficient, which yeah. is our first line of defense. Oral health which is, is falling apart. Which is apart. so interesting because I had SIBO and it took me so long. You know, I did a 21 day Did you do a fast? fast? 21 day fast. That's yeah. how you do it. And I mean, I it, my HRV was at like 200. I was in the meditation state. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. From <laughs> fasting. That's full on. Yeah. It was incredible. It was that like, was an HRV. You tested your HRV awake? And asleep as well because usually my HRV is at 30 or 40. Yeah, that's and so. But it was just like four times larger and I just like couldn't believe it. I was like, wow. So the reason I'm not sleeping well is actually because of all the food that I'm eating because it, this is what stresses my body. People don't realize. How, I had five hours of deep sleep. But that's crazy. <laughs> but people don't realize how big of a deal of eating food is. Yeah. It's a, it's like a, imagine like, a, you, you know, imagine watching a movie and watching all this like stuff happening in space, all these things. It's the same thing, but internally. When you eat, <laughs> just thinking about food turns on acid in your mouth, saliva glands, hydrochloric acid, enzymes in your liver, cytochrome P. I can go on and on. Just thinking about it, let alone chewing and, yes, you know. Yes, yes. And, and I want to talk about the acid because obviously my SIBO was gone. I tested myself. This is great. And three months later, I'm when back to having SIBO. Uh, this was last year. Okay, so it's recently. Yeah. Okay. And then I realized that it's actually because I'm stressed, I don't produce enough stomach acid. And so that was like, the, like you said, the first line of defense. So like the question is, why did I get SIBO in the first place, right? Why did I get... Yeah, follow the, the, the trail. Yeah. Interesting. And, and then, you know, like food poisoning and, you know, went to Bali, got food poisoning and get, I'm like, you sh technically, if your stomach acid is at the right levels, you can fight most of the food poisoning. Like, yeah. It's it, if you're the only one of your friends going out for dinner and getting food poisoning. There's something to that. Yeah. Um, there's many different uh, freeways to SIBO. There's many different routes. I, Helico that's why it's so Helicobacter, hard. H. pylori. Yeah, is but one I of think them. it's like uh, my doctor said, and my, might be wrong that. You have an ulcer? If, no. Okay. But like because my stomach acid, my digestive enzyme would allow for the Helicobacter bacteria to actually get into my gut. And if my stomach acids were strong enough, that probably wouldn't happen. So what Aggie's saying is, you know, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, if you don't know what SIBO is. is that I had the uh, IMO as well. The you had intest uh, The intestinal methane overgrowth, so I had two. Oh, wow. Because it's basically, there used to be a kind so of SIBO. So you're bloating a lot and yeah. all that stuff? Okay, so, so you get both. <laughs> yeah, you get both. Well, it, it makes total sense if you understand the chemistry yeah. there. And um, the liver plays its part too. Perfection well, I want to talk about the liver because I think I'm going crazy on the liver lately. I, I saw you your saw Instagram that? and I saw and I read. Whoa, 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 okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yep. Yeah. Your first line of defense is the, the acids in your body. This whole thing like, oh, we got to be alkaline and all this stuff. That's the biggest illusion. And no offense to people that are 
using electro electrolysis with their water, that's probably not the best thing to do. I'm not a big fan of that water, water machine. Yeah. 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 For that very reason, right? For that very reason. And, and a couple other reasons too, because most of that's plugged into municipal tap water. And so it's not like it's being fed by some beautiful spring. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. there's a whole, there's a whole thing to that, but back to yourself, your first line of defense to towards all pathogens, all bacteria, all infections, everything out there is your gut stomach acid pH, mm -hmm. which needs to be in that like 1.8, 2.2 range, which is extremely acidic. And if that changes just a little bit or goes off a little bit, things aren't digesting, pathogens are getting through, and now you're wreaking havoc on your system. And that's probably what happened with you is that materials that you were eating weren't, weren't digesting properly. Yeah, And, and then they'd sit there and fester and rot, putrefy, and then boom, boom, boom you have and then when growth. you test your poop sample and there's bacteria that's meant to be in your mouth and it's in your poop that's how you know yeah that that didn't a, get stopped <laughs> that is a really good point right there too is that certain bacteria are specific for oral health that are oxygen that you know they belong around the oxygen and they have a different affinity to different things and different ph and all that stuff and if they make yeah. it to your poop <laughs> yeah if they make it to your poop that's not good <laughs> no. yeah okay well i'm glad you're feeling better and you've, you've gone down that i feel absolutely great and yeah. i also tried the peptide the bhc peptide uh -huh. I think yeah. So. yeah yeah and that really helped bpc with it. bpc thank you yeah, yeah. but yeah it's, i <laughs> <laughs> like where do we go from there because it was like very curious about how do you even how do you source the ingredients right because right here we have magnesium that he didn't let me take out because he's like i'm not a salesperson i'm like i want to have it out because i want to promote symbiotic i just didn't want all this stuff I know, around I appreciate here it. Yeah, yeah. i think it's very sweet of you that yeah. you didn't come here to promote your brand you came here to chat which, yeah which i want to point out but i took it out <laughs> uh, and it basically says source from the dead sea so how does this is a topical so you just had you just uh you and your bro just had magnesium L3 and 8, which mm. is our most popular formula in Symbiotica right now, actually. Uh -huh. And that was the... Um, and it's the best kind of magnesium. It's, it's, it's the only magnesium that we know that can actually cross the blood-brain barrier at a pretty high clip. So we were talking about magnesium L3 yeah. and 8. We're so deficient in magnesium. It's not in our soil. It's not in our foods. It's not even in the chocolate anymore. And <laughs> what is magnesium? Like, let's just think about what magnesium is. We hear these like names. Yeah. Copper, magnesium, iron, silica, cadmium, lead, all of these different minerals, you know, even chlorides like sodium and cal all these things, but they're just words, right? Like what is that what does that mean? It's trippy. We're actually made of the earth. Like if I took all the organic compounds out of your body like that, you'd wither away and turn into a jelly and die. We're made of the earth, our actual physical bodies. Oh, you know, I like have tears in my eyes. That's how, so powerful. How powerful is that? And each one of those minerals has a unique subatomic charge, a signature, some kind of activity that it does. I don't care if it's lithium or whatever it is, or hematite on my neck, whatever it is, has a unique signature. And that signature does something. And we've studied it and scientists have studied it and biochemistry has studied it. And it's very interesting. Like copper does this. It helps methylation. It goes after parasites. It does, it bolsters your immune system. Da, 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 da. Zinc. Like what is zinc? Like, you know, zinc is one of the most immune ionic forms of minerals that we know of. It goes after viruses and other things like that. Zinc bolsters testosterone production. It has signal pathways. It, it turns things on. Magnesium is the chemical messenger in the body, the cellular c communicator. Magnesium is what tells or basically offers cells the ability to communicate with each other. And what I've noticed with disease pathologies is that it's basically stagnation in the body and the body cannot communicate anymore. And when the body can't communicate oh, anymore- I've never heard anyone say that's so pretty. It loses its connection points and, the, and, and things start to break down and the voltage no. starts to break down. We're electrical before we're chemical. And these particular materials help those communications and do what they're supposed to do. It hurts me because we're so demineralized as a population. I would say first and foremost, if anyone wants to get their health back in order, it's two things, okay? It's hydrate and mineralize. Those two things right there can make 70 or 80% of the difference. Everything else is in that like 30, 40% range. If you're not hydrated or mineralized, forget about it. 
I don't care what technology you're working with. I don't care what, you know, detox specialist you're working with. I don't care if you're doing ozone treatments and stem cells and all the exotic stuff. <laughs> None of that matters if you're dehydrated and demineralized. And by the way, one of the great way to dehydrate yourself is drinking too much water that's just sterile. Mm -hmm non-structured dead water yeah that has which no is voltage. so funny because people are like oh, i need to drink more water right now maybe go to the tap and drink more water and you're like actually that's how you dehydrate yourself you can actually kill yourself by drinking too much water just yeah. think about that in, in that <laughs> just self to f with you yeah just know that <laughs> we just confused you a lot so what's the solution i i use the mineralized drops obviously good quality water it's f up that we have to pay so much for good quality water these days. What you just said right there is, is something that has been coming up in conversation a lot with a lot of people um, when we think about that we're in this kind of like debt slave capitalistic system that, you know, the scarcity mentality and the, the, the money magic and just the whole, that whole thing, like the deep state, all that stuff. And it's like, we are actually, and, and there's a lot of people that are repulsed by money and repulsed by abundance. And I, and I've, I've compassion for them and empathy for them, but I also know that that's not a solution. We have to call in the abundance because we're in a position today that without abundance, you probably don't have access to like clean drinking suitable water. That's, that's exactly the point, yeah. That's how crazy it is. And people are like, why do you want to get rich? And I'm like, uh, so I can drink water that isn't <laughs> that's how, poison. That, that's how pathetic we are in our day and age is that yeah. in order to drink healthy water, we need abundance. That's scary when water should be an absolute, but it's not. And so anyone- And, and sadly, yeah. that's the reality for most people. They will probably never have access to clean water. And we look at Africa and we feel sorry for them without realizing that the amount of heavy metals in our tap water is is probably just as scary as what's happening in Africa. So like, you know. Your municipal tap water here in LA is on a whole nother level of conscious. <laughs> it's like, it's seated in some crazy stuff. And again, this is not, I'm not trying to scare people and stuff like that, but- It's too late. I think you did it already. Just do me, do me a favor. <laughs> if, you bathe, if you bathe in LA or any municipal area for that matter, not just Los Angeles, any, any metropolitan area, make sure if, if you don't have a home filtration system that's going through some kind of 12, 12 stage system, deionizing, mm. reverse osmosis, structure, whatever, at least get a shower head filter. And we have one at Symbiotica that's really you good. You do? Oh, of amazing. Course. Yeah, of course. I had to bring it to Symbiotica because it's a big passion of mine. It's part of what I do. It's like, we can do all these supplements, but if you're not only, do you, do you know how gnarly it is to bathe in, in hot municipal water? I know because I have a filter as well. So you um, see it. So it's, yeah, it's black, right? So, so here's where it gets crazy. It's not about, because we know that, um, you know, our skin's the biggest organ, mm -hmm. right? So we're absorbing things and stuff, but certain, certain toxins and things can't make it quite through the epidermis or the, the first mm -hmm. couple layers, but it's still like, it gets into, it gets into the bloodstream, but breathing it in the vapors, when you breathe in hot oh, no. shower oh. steam, it gets into your alveoli, it gets into your lungs. The lungs are the most susceptible place for us to bring any type of drug or medicine or toxin into our body. It's faster than intravenous I mean, applications, Bufo, straight to the blood. Bufo is a great proof of that. Five seconds later, you're out. See? Whereas ayahuasca, it's it a takes, process because yeah. you, you know your liver has to metabolize it. It's, it's going yeah. through an exchange. Your body is, yeah. has, you're the yeah. alchemist of the body, the liver, puts geotags it and then it converts it into a medicine and makes its, it makes its way yeah, to it's the a brain. It's beautiful, yeah. Right? Where Bufo, instantaneously, you're with God, right? Because that's where the blood, the iron, the, all of that meet together in, that, in those magical little bubbles called the alveoli. And the centrifuge happens and then it gets circulated through the body and pumped out through the heart. So be very, very cognizant. If you're listening to this, I'm saying this out of love. It's not for me. Just make sure the water you're bathing in goes through at least some type of filtration because there's trihalomethanes in the water supply, there's pharmaceutical drugs now, there's pesticides, herbicides, there's all kinds of crazy shit out there. And you have chlorine and fluoride there too, right? So yeah. it's like, and the water's dead. So it's, so what, it's full just on. for people to understand, right? Because it's like we have fluoride has been promoted as good for your teeth, but what it really does, it's like it basically blocks the pineal gland, right? Yeah, it's, um, 
it causes an interruption in the electrical communication of your nervous system, essentially. And yeah. fluoride, is, it's, not, it's not the fluoride that's naturally found in the earth. This is industry waste product that they're putting in there. And so it's on a different level. And it's been touted to um, for tartar resistance and gingivitis and oral health and teeth enamel, whatever it was. Uh, we don't want it. You, you don't want it in your body. You don't want to drink it. You don't want to bathe in it. You don't want to have it in your toothpaste. You don't want it in your toothpaste. I mean, that that's old news. We know that, right? And it's just like no. people don't realize that it, this is in their water supply and their kids are bathing in it and things that it's like, what the hell? And so you can either just say, F- it. And, you know, there's a, there is a sentiment of people like out there. They're like, oh, everything's going to kill me. You know, there's that energy out there. And I'm just kind of like, what do you, like, how are you in that level of mentality? And I'm not saying it from a higher level or I'm not higher than anyone. I just took mm. the time to learn and research this stuff. You don't need to get a PhD from John Hopkins to <laughs> learn about what's in the municipal water supply. <laughs> okay. So it's not a hierarchy here. It's just kind of common sense. Mm-hmm. And everyone has access to a thousand encyclopedias on their phones now. So instead of watching some bullshit video it, on how to escape, why don't yeah. you just read a little bit and understand this stuff is real. And to be fair though, I realized that Google has gotten really bad at pulling up interesting information. I didn't mention Google. That's very true. Cause yeah. a lot of times when I mention, you know, I teach women how to sync their cycle to the moon and connect because that's one of our ways to connect with nature. Yeah. And they were like, I can't find anything online. And I was like, really? Because I'm like, I know where to look, but they've scraped I, the algorithm. They they've they've scraped the algorithm over the last four years. Heavy. So they've it's taken, not as easy to find, right? And sadly, right. like if you, you know, if I can Google, hey, like is a oatmeal great for me for breakfast? And they're like, yeah, glyphosate is fantastic and it's barely any left in the oatmeal and blah, 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 right? That's the thing. Like that's the first thing that would come up in your search. You get it. You complete me. <laughs> it's so, it's oh. so, it's so refreshing to have a conversation with someone who's like a step ahead of me. You know, you're, you're a step ahead mm-hmm. of me every time and, and you're absolutely right. And so where are we going to get our information? Well, you can come onto my social media. All I do is spit this type of truth. Yeah, it's and, very powerful. And, One of my favorite people to follow, to be fair, because it's like, mm. you don't give a f- which I also want to talk about, because I think it's like, you should give a because f- you have a massive brand behind you. So. It's a little, it's, it's a tightrope that I walk. Yeah, I'm yeah. walking a tightrope. I'm, I'm picking and choosing my battles, and I, I'm in somewhat gray area sometimes. But you're still doing it. I have to be, yeah, I drop clues though. No. I'm not like just forcing it and telling you this size. I think there's enough people doing that out there. I don't need to do that. Because I I, I don't want to be part of the indoctrination system. You know, we talk about the school Mm -hmm. system and the state sponsored school system, how big of a disaster that is to the children's ability to develop intuition and develop their own ecosystem and their own powers and and trusting themselves. I don't want to be a part of that same, you know, racket. Mm -hmm. And so instead of just telling people, I want to drop clues so they hear it, they feel something, maybe they need to hear it a few times, and then they're like, okay, it's time for me to become an investigator. And they practice their God-given right of something that we love to call discernment. And Beautiful. discernment is the foundational institution within ourselves to build memory faculties, to develop intelligence faculties, to develop relationship faculties, because you've observed something, you've used direct observation. It wasn't based on judgment, which is rooted in fear. It's based on your truth, your gnosis, and your investigation. And you've studied it, you've researched it, then you've made your hypothesis based on the information that you've investigated. That right there is the most powerful form. I compare it to like, remember in school, we had to like, we had, we had an exam coming. We, we crammed the night before, aced the test, got a hundred percent. Three days later, you couldn't, I, I wouldn't get one of them right. Same. Because it wouldn't stick into the neocortex. It wasn't sticking into the brain. It wasn't part of me loving it. I, didn't, I had no love for it. I actually hated it. It was yeah. just means to get it, get something to move on. Yeah. That's, how we cannot approach our lives today when it comes to our embodiment, when it comes to our relationships, when it comes to our health, it's robbing us of all the value that's there. And I think that right there, I don't know how we got here, but I think that right there is the destruction of our world. It's that very essence and or lack of essence. 
and the system, whoever you want to call them, Cabal, Deep State, whatever, whatever their names, they all have different names. It doesn't even matter. I don't even mm-hmm. care anymore because it's a parasite. And that parasite has made its way into the minds and into our hearts. And we're not operating with intention anymore. And that's the cornerstone of Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner's work in, in biodynamic farming and Waldorf education. It wasn't this, it's not a religion. It's not memorizing this, this. It's the embodiment of you being your own scientist, you being your own wizard, and really learning to love the many things in life and becoming a ritualistic person. So you start developing your craft Mm. and you realize it's not just intellectualism, it's actually the embodiment. Yeah. Like you have to build things with your hands. Like we're the children aren't doing this anymore. Just think about like, that. Like, don't even get me started because I think it's just like I, I, I know that if I have children, they're gonna be brought up in Bali on it, like yeah. homeschooled. Because it's I, the only way. Yeah, it's it, it's, it's the only way. I, I, that's why I don't have kids. <laughs> it's the only way. Yeah. I, I could never let them be part of any of that. And there are amazing. Like, yeah. I would. I, I can see. I can really deeply feel for parents that build some sort of connection with their children only to let them go to school and like in a few years later they feel like oh I don't know this human anymore because like, it's just completely brainwashed by the system right and so totally. I, I'm not ready for that at no, all no, it's not part of your karma no yeah, and, for, I think, for, for, and whoever's listening to this like something brought you here to hear this yeah and so no judgment whether there's no judgment at all yeah. It's just, this is a perspective based on, you know, looking at the lens of many different lives and and seeing what I've seen. I mean, I I have friends that have raised their children on the land in Kauai, Mm. free of all outside information, so cosmically connected to the land and, and having them at age three or four learning survival techniques and how to grow food. Like growing your own garden, just that in itself is such a tool because think about it. Great for your microbiome, the best microbiome hack ever to go gardening. I always tell people, like, how many probiotics? I'm like, just go gardening, actually. You know, that's it. Wash your hands, wrap them on your face. Your skin has a microbiome. Your hair has a microbiome. Everything has a microbiome. So let's explain maybe to people what microbiome is. Because it's, it's this fancy biohacking word, you know, microbiome. <laughs> like, what does it even mean? Well, it means that. In it, very a, simple there's words. There's a biome and there's a micro perspective of it. And that means that there's... Biome is like a... It's an ecosystem. Ecosystem. Right. And it's supposed to be symbiotic. Ha. Ah. So what does symbiotic mean? Symbiotic means multitude of organisms coming together for perfection. Wow. Yeah. So it's mutualism across the board. Got it. It's and so dysbiosis. Syntropic. Syntropic. And so yeah. dysbiosis means that the, there's more bad guys than the good guys. Yeah, it could be one it could be one bad guy which creates all the chaos. Wow. Uh-huh. Because it's funny because it's like one of the great this is how my mind went from gardening, which is great for microbiome, to then what's great for microbiome is having pets, but also pets bring a lot of parasite, right? Because pets are great for pet influences everybody's microbiome. Yeah. Hundred percent. And you so, could study that. Really? Oh, absolutely. Someone who's has, who has dogs in their house that lives with dogs, they have a completely different microbiome than and someone that doesn't stronger, have dogs. And it's usually stronger, no? You know, I don't know if it's stronger, but it could be more diverse. It could, you know, and, and people's constitution are different. Like mm-hmm. my constitution might be completely different than yours or his or whoever. So we don't know. It's not, this isn't like cut black or white. Right, so some people can can handle these things, and their body builds resistance. And after ten years, fifteen years, they have a stronger constitution for it. You know what mm. I mean? But some people, it could railroad them into sickness and disease. Right? That's yeah. tr- that's the truth of it. And so we have to just be cognizant of that, and Beautiful. and really and really like dive into that. And you asked me about the microbiome. Yes. It's just it's a diverse orchestra of non mammalian cells that are there as part of this, whatever this dimension is, that's how nature defined us to have equivalence and to be able to respond to to stress and to be able to adapt. 
and it's and some of them are for melanin production and for keeping bacteria infections off our body and fungus and mold some of them are to translate proteins fats carbohydrates other things into utilized food wow. you know and to be able to digest things properly you know, and, and be able to balance out things like acromensia, which is, th you know, bacteria in the body that helps do certain things that regulate ghrelin hormone, which is an antagonist for hunger and all these things. Yeah. You know, some of them are, you know, designed to, to, to specifically manufacture neurotransmitters, you know, and, and other things like anandamide, the bliss molecule. We know about serotonin and dopamine and those things, but the bliss molecule is manufactured in the lower gut. Things of that nature, it's very specific. And so my whole thing is the more that we can be, you know, I would say flourished around and, and allow ourselves to be dripped around and energetically in that biofield, the better chances we have of living a healthy, happy, content life. Aww. It's really beautiful. And I, and so I was, I see kids that are in the earth that are growing food and then they have dinner and they know how much hard work it took to grow that bok choy or to grow that, you know, whatever that herb was, they are developing a different level of empathy than a child that has no idea where any of these foods are coming from and are, are just sitting there and, and eating no, 100%, the food. 100%. 100%. percent i sadly I'm the second group. Like, I'm the child that was just, like, handed over. My parents had a little summer house that we'd go to and grow vegetables, but it was never really, like, there was no not enough reverence for the land. It was just like, yeah, we're in a city. We're lucky to be in a city kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which is very sad that somehow people in the cities feel superior for whatever reason, which we're sadly not. I think that's starting to switch. And yes. That's why you see the yeah. mass exodus out. And yeah. look, we're in this 21st century Gregorian, whatever the hell this thing is. I don't even know if that calendar is even real. It's, it's, just, <laughs> it's all kind of foofy yeah. to me. But what I'm saying is, is that if you're listening to this, find balance. You know, yeah. and maybe you need to go extreme a little bit to find that balance. Yeah. Right. And that's that's really key. And growing have, your own food and being connected to the earth is a, a main it's a main channel to finding your health and finding your your cosmic rhythm. Cosmic rhythm. Which is mm. beyond circadian, which is a whole nother part of my entire reality is how I go to sleep and how I rise every day. I have it, you know, I have non negotiables, Aggie. You know, what start, are those? Well, I mean, it's like what time I'm going to bed, the temperature of the room, who's in the room with me when I'm sleeping. You know, you could have a partner that's that works well with you. You have similar dojas, similar energetic field, and you actually sleep perfectly together. But then you could have a partner that you can't even sleep next to energetically, and that will ruin your sleep and destroy everything. So you got to have that awareness and be able to be a scientist when it comes to that. You know, how I'm rising every day, what time I'm rising you know, my, where my clock's at, how I'm getting full sun exposure, I'm getting on the earth, I'm hydrating first thing on the rise. You know, I'm doing certain hip mobility movements on the rise. It's so critical that we're doing those, you know, those spinal movements on the rise, yep. you know, cat call and all, all the different things. And, and, and also the way I'm talking to myself on the rise, how I'm communicating Ooh. with myself. That's key. You know, those what are non-negotiables. Well, I, 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 I'm very thankful for the opportunity to have carnated, you know, into this family, you know, that, to have my father and mother who struggled so much to bring us to America. You know, I come from immigrant parents from Iran and what they've gone through. I also am very thankful for, you know, the souls that I cross paths with, you know, like you, I'm just so like, like what a fucking trip. Like, you know, I, I'm in reverence of it and in awe of it. And, and then at the end, just being able to help people, you know, that's like the greatest medicine because I'm getting recognized everywhere I go now, you know, on the streets, wherever I, mean, I can be anywhere in the world and people are, are coming up to me and seeing me at the airport and, it, and to be recognized, not as being some celebrity, but um, to be helping people. Healing people. Healing people, helping people, being part of their journey, being vulnerable, you know, this Beautiful is, legacy. This is, I don't know. It's like, you know, and, and um, my father transitioned uh, four years ago and he was my best friend. He was my mm. life. He was my everything. And I didn't think I could live without him. This type of work that I'm doing and being so committed to the unfolding and the unraveling and the unlearning is really what gets me through, you know, because mm. without that, I, I don't know 
I, I'm, I don't know what else I'd be doing. Wow. Yeah. That, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Of course. Absolutely. Super powerful. Yeah. I do want to talk a little bit about these pills right here that you brought <laughs> because you showed up to my house with this beautiful bag and I was like, are these drugs? Because it looks like a pill from the matrix or whatever it might be, you know, in our f- f- friends group, this could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> Is it right. ayahuasca in a pill? Or? Right, right. <laughs> but, uh, that's it's not, not a bad idea. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we'll talk about that offline. <laughs> so what is that? What is it? So that's our para X formula, which actually sold out like in a week we sold out and everywhere I go, I was at air one the other day and all the girls work in there and all the guys, all the managers, they all ran after me. They recognized me. They're like, where's para X? Please give us para X. And, um, that, that is breaking the, the pattern or that, that's a pattern interrupter in the, in the industry. No one's ever done anything like that before. I've been around parasite cleansing forever. I mean, you first thing you said, you have a dog, you definitely have parasites. I'm like, <laughs> I definitely, do, especially after living in Bali with five puppies licking my face all the time that I got off the street. Um, it's just, you know, they're, they're in poop. They're licking yeah. things. It's just all, all these things. And you just never know. Cats probably have a little bit more parasites than, than dogs. They, they obviously host uh, Toxoplasma gondii, um, which is a cat parasite, which can really mess with your brain. And it's very dangerous for pregnant women. But there are so many known parasites out there. Like if you eat sushi in the past five years, you, you could possibly have roundworm and other protozoas yeah. and all these things. You know, even walking barefoot in the park, you know, it's just because it's just so dirty out there. You have no idea what, what you're yeah. in. Uh, parasites are everywhere. Our body has a system to balance the parasites, but we're not running completely at optimum phase. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it. So parasites start to become a burden. They live in our liver. They live in our lower gut. They embed themselves in there and they eat all kinds of stuff that we need. And they also poop everywhere in our body. So it's creating like an ammonia field and things like that. So it's creating a toxic effect and parasites lead towards all the dysbiosis and de- deregulated systems that we're feeling in our adrenal system. Cause it's, you're constantly in a fight flight. You can have your hair is breaking down, your skin's breaking down, irregular heartbeat, you know, muscle twitching, red eyes, all of these things, kind of like you're hung over all the time. And that could be a parasite infection and parasites aren't just parasites. They're, you know, they could be a spirochete like Lyme, right? Babesia, and candida, like candida is an infection, you know, H. So Py- H. pylori, uh, we talked about, yeah. Girardia, these are things that I mean, you can so just pick many. up. I think it's candida so common among women. Like It's, it's just- everywhere. And it's screwing people's lives. And it's causing a lot of inflammation. And it's leading us towards disease. And so and that just was, so to say, yeah. on the spiritual level, I just want to interrupt that. Like you might be saying, "Oh, whatever. I might have a parasite in my body. I'll be fine." But on the spiritual level, when we said in ayahuasca ceremony, my shaman was like, you "Have parasite people take advantage of you? As long as you have parasite in your body, other organism will pick it up on it. So if someone else is feeding off your energy, other people will. So getting rid of the parasite is what you can do to really just transform your life. That's right, and, and take the wheel back. Yeah. yeah, because wouldn't it make sense if you're if you've got a high parasitic load in the body, you're kind of operating as a parasite. Yeah, and you, you're you because you're running on half empty, so you're looking and reaching for things to fill, and that could be anything. That could be toxic food. That's why you're having these food cravings. Oh, one hundred percent. Parasites love. I mean, the cravings are yeah. not normal. I think when you have cravings, something is off, right? It's not normal to like, oh, I want these cookies. Unless you're pregnant. For me, like the moment I have a craving for a specific thing, which is a craving, not a hunger, I know something is off. Totally. Because right? it's like... It's, yeah. There's a difference between feeling like a desire for something yeah. versus like... I'm going to kill everybody on my way. <laughs> that, that just shows you that your, your vital force is off and there's something going yeah. on. So that right there was meant to be... I wouldn't say it's it's not a cleanse. It's an activator. It's activating your immune system by pushing down the parasites. We have some crazy compounds in there. There's over 40 compounds in there. That's sitting in a lipid oil matrix of oregano, thyme, clove, olive, and monolaurin, which is antibacterial agent found in coconut. And so that's the oil that's gone through a triple ozone pass. So it's been triple ozonated. That sounds so cheap to make. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the most expensive. I'm kidding. I'm being I think, sarcastic. No, I know. That's the most expensive supplement probably in the history of supplementations. I'll just say that right there. I, I mean, you can only imagine. Like, it looks like a little uh, factory. Let know? me tell you what was in some, some of that material. So one of them, so we have, you know, all the known anti-parasitic, anti-microbial, anti-lime materials in there, but we don't have the weeds and seeds approach where you just take herbs and dice them up and encapsulate them. We took the active compounds from them. Does uh-huh. that make sense? The yeah. actives. One of the compounds in there most people have never heard of is called caffeic acid phenethyl ester. Have you heard of that? No. But I'm, it, kind of, I'm getting used to it too, <laughs> for, you, for you to be using words I've never heard before. Have you heard of bee propolis? Yes. Okay, do you know what B propolis is? I've heard of it, but like, no. Okay, so B propolis, so, so in our, on our farm on the island, we always scrape the B propolis off the hives. So the propolis is what Mother Nature designed, the most ordained creatures, which is our bees, our pollinators, that create the life cycle. It's how they protect their hives is from propolis. Propolis is a concoction of oils and terpenes that they're getting from nature that creates a resistance to fungus and mold and parasites and is that toxins. that how it works? Right. And so that is, that's what propolis is. And in, in a hive, you can get bee pollen, you can get you know royal jelly, you can get all these amazing things. It's the propolis, though, that is the, is the anti-parasitic, anti-this and anti-that. The main compound in that is called caffeic acid phenethyl ester. And so I have, the, I have CAPE in there. If you just go on the search engines, I don't care if you use Google or whatever, or this and that, and just type in caffeic acid phenethyl ester benefits studies, you'll see at least four, 500 documented peer reviewed published studies on what this compound does. So insane, so anti aging that are attached to most diseases out there. You can't even believe it. And I have that in there in a whopping dose. And there's no supplement brand or company out there that's ever done that. Wow. And that's just one one of 40 other compounds in there. So Incredible. Th- so th- I'm explaining this because me and my team were able to do this. And um, it's been a journey. And the reviews and testimonials on that are insane. It's, it's an experience. Yeah, I, I, It's a I, modulator too, by the way. It's not a cleanse. Are you familiar with the term no. modulation? So we, we, we're not cleansing. We're not stripping. We're, we're by, by going after these pathogens, the immune system's starting to wake up. Uh, Think about like a war. If, if someone was to go to war with someone and it was just one-on-one, you have, a, you have a line, right? And that's the line. But if someone's at war with someone and they're at war with someone over here, now they're opening up two defense lines. No. Let's say you're at war with everyone in, around you. There's a hundred people around you and all of them are different lines. Now you're getting spread thin. You can't focus on that one thing. That's our immune system when it's invaded with bacteria and infections and co-infections and STDs and viral loads and Epstein-Barr and all these fucking things. All of a sudden, that's when you have people breaking down and having a complete collapse. You've heard of it, right? I mean, yeah, it happens more often than not, right? Like. Uh, a lot of people are going through that. And a lot of people don't even realize that their symptoms, like they get the flu all the time or their runny nose or their sore throat. They don't realize that what is, what's happening here. That means that your immune system is being stretched and you're not able to stay solid. We're, we've got, we've got to get out of this like allopathic thinking that we're supposed to be sick all the time, or it's normal to get congestion yeah. in our lungs, or it's normal to have a sore throat. That's not normal. Uh, or it's the flu season or whatever we call it, right? Between me and you, I haven't had a sore throat at least six years. No. Yeah, at least six years. The only time I, the last time I got sick was when my dad, when we were in it with my dad, and that's because I just wasn't eating, and I, and that's but my immune system was shot i was yeah. in the most ultimate pain fear and couldn't think and so my immune system shot so these are main these are designed to modulate the immune system wow. to say hey immune system take a step back we got this and go focus on something else beautiful yeah it's really really exciting stuff oh honestly i i just love how much how much you care yeah you know, it's, right it's, back at you. What you what you see in me is 
And yeah, you. it's it's beautiful. I cannot wait where you, what you're going to create next and what you, <laughs> with with symbiotic and on your own. It's been such an honor. We like when I sat with ayahuasca quite recently, uh, and my shaman said that instead of saying amen, which we think it's like this is the truth, why don't we just say let me see if it's true for me? Mm. And I think it's so beautiful to finish the podcast. It's like if you're listening to this and you're feeling like okay, is this, I need to reinvent my life? Like, no, just see for yourself. See if it resonates, if, you know, see if it's true for you. You know, what we just shared, what we, this is our truth. We would die for it, <laughs> you know, or it's, we, we create our entire life around it. And that could be the best testament to how true it feels to us, but it might not be true for you. And I think that's the most beautiful lesson in life to just see what's true for you. Thank Perfectly you for said. coming. Perfectly said, I agree a hundred percent. This is just our version. And if it sparks your interest, be the investigator and go find out more. And, and you got this. You do got this. Yeah. Thank you <laughs> thank for you having so me here. It's epic to be here. Great thank conversation. You for, thank you for coming. Okay. Big thank love. you. <laughs>